Hi guys. It is uh, December 16, 2018. Once again, I am posting a video to tell you that you can't count on anyone but yourself to protect yourself, to protect your family. And as a former liberal progressive Democrat who didn't really think too much about the gun issue, but my social network certainly did, um, very important to reevaluate those beliefs that you have to find out that they're actually not yours, that you have adopted those beliefs and they have been supported for your entire life, supported by your own families, friends, social network, and you all think that you are right, everybody else is wrong, and that, well, those beliefs that you have, because you have the support of everybody in your life, you do think that your belief is right. And anybody who has a different belief is wrong. Well, uh, I found out that I was very wrong regarding the Second Amendment. And I will tell you that though I did not ask any of those in my social network if they had done any research on the Second Amendment and its importance. I didn't. So these beliefs that we have really do need to be reevaluated. I'm going to show you there is a bill it has bipartisan support and actually more support from Republicans that is yet another bill that is very dangerous in terms of what it will do to your right to own a gun. But I'm also going to show you the importance of every American arming themselves because we are being deliberately set up for violence and I will show you how but first I want you to listen to just a minute and a half of this broadcast Dallas robbery victim said he waited two and a half hours for officers are you kidding me this is deliberate all institutions all systems are being dismantled in the United States. Now, if Americans had a big picture view of what was taking place in this country, if they were informed properly instead of remaining willfully ignorant, they would understand that everything that they are seeing is just part of an agenda to break us down, to take us down, to destroy this country, our individual rights, the Constitution, you know, it, it's really, it, it's a, it's just this illusion that people still have that we have one. But because they are having difficulty taking those guns, the Second Amendment, well, all amendments, uh, the Constitution would still be operating today if Americans demanded that it be followed. But we don't. And it's just a matter of time before we see that Second Amendment completely gone. I, as a former liberal progressive Democrat, saying every American needs to be armed. It, and if that were the case, if every American was carrying a firearm, these people who commit violence against others, robbing them, assaulting them, raping, whatever it is, they would think twice if we all had the freedom to carry. 
but unfortunately a lot of Americans uh, they won't even do any thinking to get them to realize oh wait it's not the gun that's the problem uh, there's a deeper uh, cause to this violence and it might lead them to realize that these mass shootings many of which have been staged for the agenda to get the guns from Americans well if they would just do a little bit of thinking they might understand that wait a second these laws that are being passed the bill that is on its way to the house um, in Congress, they might be able to recognize that these representatives of ours are working not for us, but for the United Nations, for corporations, and they are working an agenda. So, um, I do want you to listen to just a few minutes of this. And the victim that we spoke to says no, Chief Hall did not Here. And in a string of robberies all across Dallas, the victims of nine holdups stretching from Oak Cliff to East Dallas. Just tonight, we did learn that Dallas police made two new arrests. Two other suspects are already in custody. But one man wants to know what police are doing to get help to people faster. He's sharing his story only with CBS 11's Aaron Jones tonight. Aaron? Doug, tonight that one victim tells me he and his neighbors called 911 eight times trying to get dispatchers to send help. He says they waited for two and a half hours traumatized before officers arrived. They had me on the ground, gun against my head. I did my best not to look at their face. I didn't care. I wanted them to get whatever they needed out of me. This victim, who asked us not to show his face, describes being attacked by four masked gunmen earlier this month. They pulled each credit card and ATM card out of my wallet, put it in front of my face, asked me for the pin, said, if you give me the wrong pin, you're dead. We'll shoot you. A neighbor saw what was going on and called 911. I went to a few other neighbors just to let them know what, what happened. They came over. They all called from their personal phones. He says two and a half hours went by as they waited for police. I just kept calling saying, are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. This could be a really bad deal. These guys said they are coming back. They are coming back to get us. The next day, he met with his city councilman and Dallas Police Chief Renee Hall. She said that the root of the problem was 911. You know, and again, she apologized immensely. She just could not apologize enough. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm glad you're sorry, but what are we going to do about fixing this problem? Dallas police sent this statement to CBS 11, saying this call should have been updated and expedited, but was not due to human error. Okay, Later I'm saying sorry. the department has um, taken initial... This is deliberate. I'm sorry. It should have been updated and expedited. There were eight calls to 911. Okay, so how do you protect yourself from what is taking place in this country? You have the best shot if you have a gun. That's it. And my even saying that, man, it's amazing the residual from who you used to be, the social network that you had, the uh, beliefs that you have. You know, just even saying that, well, I don't have those um, people in my life anymore, so I'm not going to get attacked, certainly not uh, face to face. But even my just saying that, I had this oh, little bit of fear. <gasps> what are you saying? This is so sacrilege. No, it is not. Especially when you understand that governments, local, state, and federal, are working against Americans. They are destroying this country. And they are actually setting us up. ICE. ICE released 36,000 criminal aliens.
in 2013. Convicted criminal aliens, convicted of hundreds of violent and serious crimes, including homicide, sexual assault, kidnapping, aggravated assault. The list of crimes also includes more than 16,000 drunk or drug driving convictions. The vast majority of the releases discretionary. ICE didn't have to, but ICE chose to. So of those 36,007 releases, they totaled 88,000 convictions. So many of them were repeat offenders and ICE released them back onto the streets of the United States. And here's the breakdown of all of the uh, crimes that they were convicted of. Why would ICE do that? 36,000 released back onto the streets to commit more crime. How about another, 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 on top of the 36,000 30,000 with criminal records were released. Department of Homeland Security. So, what does that add to? That adds to 66,000 releases in 2013 criminals. Um, in 2014, ICE released another 30 1,558 criminal aliens. And most of these criminal convicted felons who were illegally in our country, the vast majority committed violent crimes. 2015, there was a release of 19,723 and that included 208 convicted of murder, 900 convicted of sex crimes, and 12,307 drunk driving. Do you see something deliberate here? Do you see a pattern here? And when Americans have been upset about these releases, ICE then comes back and says, we're going to try harder next year. How is it that Americans can't see through even what is so obvious? You're being set up for crime, for, to become a victim of crime. How do you protect yourself? The only way is to have a firearm. But guess what? Bipartisan congressional effort to usurp cons constitutional rights on guns coming. All right. Um, Congressman John Randolph, a cousin of Thomas Jefferson, said that the Constitution of the United States is just parchment, just words, unless we are prepared to make sure government officials follow that document. And guess what? We the people failed. And that's why. Really, the only thing hanging about of the Constitution is the Second Amendment. So, the House Subcommittee on Crime, Terrorism, Homeland Security, and Investigations has a bill that they're going to be introducing to the whole House. It is H.R. 5717, the Jake Laird Act of 2018. And it has bipartisan support, bipartisan sponsors, one sponsor, Susan Brooks of Indiana, Republican. It has 15 co-sponsors and nine co-sponsors are Republicans. A majority 
who have co-sponsored this bill are Republicans. Could you please, those of you who still are playing this dangerous game we got going here in this country, leaving, there's two parties, the Republicans going to fight for you, the Democrats are, are uh, destroying you. It ain't the case. We have one party. We, we play this degrading game, going out to vote. Let's, let's get out there to vote. And that's all Americans need to do to feel like they're a responsible citizen. They vote. They have no idea what's going on. No idea about the laws that are passed, what Congress is really doing. They have no clue about what their local governments are doing, state governments are doing. They just vote, and that's enough. Well, uh, talk about talk about an action that is so degrading, because it does not matter who you vote for. Even if you're voting for someone who you think is upright, and they are going to fight for you. They soon find out that they don't, they can't, because the system is so corrupt. Many of them become corrupted. Many of them are campaigning with a corrupt core. So, no, our representatives in Congress provide for you uh, this staged movie. Uh, they try very hard to make you still believe that you have a constitution, that we have three branches of government, that we still are living in the United States of America when it is clear we are not. Sorry, I just got interrupted because uh, cats were about to fight. So, it is our job to make sure that our government officials uh, are not representing corporations, the United Nations, but representing the people, and it's our job to hold them accountable and make sure that they implement, follow the Constitution. Well, that, that now is a pipe dream, but for all of you who have guns, you really want to call, especially those Republicans who have co-sponsored this bill, Susan Brooks of Indiana, um, and demand that this bill not get passed. So the bill authorizes the Attorney General of the United States to make grants to states that have in place laws that authorize the seizure of firearms from dangerous individuals and for other purposes. Hmm, what other purposes? Don't you think that those other purposes need to be defined? These laws that are passed are so vague on their face that they could really scoop up anyone they wanted. But this is how the federal government bribes states to do what they want the states to do. They did it with Common Core. If you don't uh, adopt the Common Core standards, you will uh, receive no federal funding for education. They did it with the 55 mile per hour uh, standard back in the 70s. Um, they said, you don't adopt this standard, then you won't get any highway funding. They will do the same with this bill as well. Um, and <laughs> you want to know, you look at these, well, who's a dangerous person? Who's a dangerous individual? The first and the last category are by far the most frightening. Dangerous person is defined as an individual who presents 
and imminent risk of injuring himself or herself or another individual. That, that's one category. Wow. Okay. Well, who, who gets to claim that somebody's dangerous? States have these laws. I think nine states have laws that allow a neighbor or a family member who might be pissed at you and want you to suffer consequences um, to just call and say, oh, my brother or my neighbor, he's violent. He's been acting in a way. It could be complete lie, a complete lie, lies told. The police show up. They escort you to a psychiatric institution. They take away your firearms. And people do do that. Uh, yeah, Americans lie, especially when they want to get back at somebody. So very dangerous when you have these laws that allow Americans to destroy others. So the others, uh, the other uh, categories of dangerous person, uh, let's see, one who may present a risk of injuring himself or herself or another individual and has a mental illness that may be controlled by medication but has demonstrated a pattern of not voluntarily and consistently taking such medication except under supervision. Uh, and somebody can lie about that category of person. Um, or is the subject of documented evidence that would give rise to a reasonable belief, reasonable belief that the individual has a propensity for violent or emotionally unstable conduct. That's the only one that says, hey, you need documented evidence. And what that evidence could be is, let's say, a prior uh, police report or domestic violence. Um, no, none of the other categories. You need evidence. Listen to this. The last one is the most frightening. Possesses a significant danger of personal injury to himself or herself or another individual by possessing a firearm. What? Um, the mere fact that you have a firearm, well, that means you possess a danger. Uh, just the mere fact that you have a firearm. But if you have, let's say, hunting knives, or then you possess a significant danger of personal injury. This last one is the one that really worries me. And you've got to get this bill to... Uh, Get it dead in its tracks. Start calling now. The other <laughs> part of the bill, you don't have to be convicted. Just that you have been considered dangerous, you will be entered into the National Institute, uh, Institute National Instant Criminal Background Check System simply because you've been picked up as dangerous. You don't have to be dangerous. Somebody said you were dangerous. You don't have to have a conviction. So if you want to go buy another firearm, let's say you get your firearms back, which I've heard a lot of people have great difficulty in those states when they have been wrongly accused of being a danger to their self or others. They have the firearms taken. They're brought to psychiatric institutions. They have been found to be not dangerous, but they have difficulty getting back their firearms. The same, I have no doubt, will hold true with this. But how do you get off this criminal background check system? We know 
that getting off these lists are very, very difficult. But you want to buy another firearm. Let's say you get back your firearms and you want to buy another firearm. So you go to a gun store and the owner does this instant criminal background check and sees that you're dangerous. Doesn't want to sell it to you. You explain. You might even show documentation. You are not, you, you've not been convicted. It won't matter. Because the gun store owner may be afraid of liability. Your life suddenly turns into a nightmare. How many innocent Americans have had their lives turned into a nightmare? So, uh, unfortunately, you can't just deny uh, a state law by refusing to turn over your gun magazines like a million plus in New Jersey did. The governor of New Jersey, Governor Murphy, um, a law was passed and signed by the governor to turn over standard capacity gun magazines and over one million New Jersey residents said, fuck you, we ain't doing it. Okay, that works when you have to turn them over. The only thing that will work, I'm sorry, with uh, <laughs> another video, but um, the only thing that will work is for you to take action on this bill to make sure that it doesn't pass because they're not asking you to voluntarily turn over your guns. They will be coming to your house and taking them. All links are below.